Painting skin tones is not as difficult as you might think. The key is to create a base color that you can work off for the entire portrait. To create such a base, I identify the main colors of my reference first. In this portrait, we have warm beige, reds, yellows and dark browns. So for my base, I pick yellow okra, mix in a bit of white and burnt sienna. For this portrait, I paint with open acrylics from Golden on hot pressed watercolor paper. The open acrylics stay longer wet than regular acrylics and the damp paper helps keeping them moist, which makes blending a lot easier. Blending with acrylics is always a bit difficult, so keeping the surface kind of damp helps with that. You can also follow this tutorial with oils or gouache as the mixing process is very similar. By the way, I have listed all materials in the video description. And here is how I mix skin tones. I start with a hot red for the shadows on the left side of her face by just adding cadmium red light to my base skin tone. And then I add this color to as many areas in the portrait that I can find. This saves time and you don't have to mix the same color over and over again. After painting the red, I continue by adding more ochre to my base skin tone again and painting the left area of the face. As you can see, the amount of mixed paint on my palette continuously grows and it will contain lots of different shades that I can pick while working on the portrait. This way of mixing makes it naturally easier than mixing each skin tone over and over again. Whenever you have a large amount of paint on your palette, leave it and just modify it while you paint. You can add orange to it, yellows, browns, pinks or whites to get it to all sorts of different shades. After a while, your base skin tone will get muddy and then you have to start over again. But until then, you can work with it and you can also separate little parts of it for different color gradations like a more grayish, yellowish or bluish tone. Now, if you like to see the mixing process in detail and how I go about painting each and every part of this portrait, join me on Patreon and watch the extended two and half an hour long version of this painting tutorial. You will also get immediate access to over 200 painting videos and step-by-step -step tutorials at once. Just follow the link in the video description to join. Now, let's continue the mixing process. The portrait has large areas in the middle face, forehead and nose bridge that are differently colored than the edges of the face. For that, I need a much lighter tone. So I add a big chunk of white paint to my base color, a tiny bit of yellow, and then I paint in all the areas that contain this yellowish tone. In the beginning, I don't pay much attention to details, which means I will have a horrific ugly stage. But you don't need to worry with acrylic paint, because you can just paint over everything again. Next, I mix a bit of burnt sienna into my skin tones again, to make them darker, and paint the left side of her forehead. Now to paint the lips, I use my skin tone base too, and I take a bit of magenta and cadmium red light and mix it into the accumulated colors on my palette. This way the color will get a bit muddier, which is exactly what we need for the lip color. You can always create new badges of skin tone paint on your palette. This is why I love working on a big palette, because I have enough space for all the paints I need. I also work on the peel off palette because it makes my life easier. Now, for the sides of her nose, I need a slightly darker skin tone, but not as dark as the area under her eyebrows. So I just mix transparent oxide red. By the way, I also use a water spray bottle to keep my acrylic paint on the palette wet. Next, I paint over the lips with a slightly darker red tone. I paint the area on the bridge on her nose in a light yellow. Here, I just add white and yellow to my skin tone base. The area right next under her eye circles has a yellow tint. So I use a clean spot on my palette to mix a white yellow color for that. I wanted to make the left jaw area darker. So I mixed a bit of transparent oxide red and magenta into my skin tone base. The lower part of my palette has darker red tones. So I use this area to mix those. I overpaint the eyebrows and give them a decent form. I spent lots of time working on the eyes and getting them even. The good thing with acrylics is that if you mess up, you have infinite tries to correct it. I just painted as long as I needed to get a pair of decent eyes. I remixed the intense reddish brown tone for the under eye shadow. Since the paint of the cheekbones was still somewhat wet, I could blend it. Now I add a heap of white to my skin tone base to lighten it. I paint the highlights on her forehead and cheeks with a big brush. 
I am working on more details of my painting now. After I have painted all the large shapes first, I now need to take care of the smaller shapes. I remix a brown tone with yellow ochre, light yellow and white for the areas next to her mouth. Because I can't blend the acrylics as perfectly as oils, I need to work in little patchwork pieces instead. Here I work on the area where the nose meets the forehead. The nose bridge is a little lighter than the space between the eyebrows. So I just pick the colors I need from my palette. By now I have mixed enough different shades that selecting the right color is now relatively easy compared to the beginning. Next I work on the lips again. I painted back and forth because I wasn't happy with the shape and shading and I wasn't sure how to blend them into the skin around. I mixed some brown and blue tones for the shadow under the lip. Then I dragged it out towards her right jaw. On the reference you might detect a light blue shadow there. Next I added more eyebrow hair to give them definition. After I finished the face, I continued with the rest of the painting. I mixed a light blue tone to paint the dress and I kept it very simple. I mixed a dark brown tone for her hair. Instead of painting the ears, I just add two semi-transparent brush strokes over them. I love the look of it. And unfortunately, I had to clean my palette after all to paint the background. I needed a pure off-white tone and I can only get that with a clean palette. I also drew the background slightly over the hair. To refine parts of the painting, I draw a couple of thin contours around the face and hair. Then I darken parts of the hair with pure black. I decided that I wanted to have some washes last minute. And of course, some splashes. I really liked how the painting turned out with these added abstract effects. But now I felt the painting was a little bit too messy. So I painted over some of the splashes again and I also merged the hair a bit into the background. For that I had to remix the hair color so that I was able to blend it into the wet background color. I added a couple of minor corrections with color pencils to finish the painting. I discovered that acrylic paint does allow drawing over it with color pencils. I thought that was super cool, so I took the opportunity and add slight corrections here and there. Especially little flaws regarding symmetry of the face. It turns out that symmetry is my biggest enemy, because I had to go back and forth to the bathroom mirror to check my painting. It took me forever but it was all worth it. And now I'm super happy with the results. I hope you liked this portrait too and you could learn something new. And I hope I see you in the next one. Have a wonderful painting day. Bye bye.